California's entire tectonic plate has shifted, and it's going to be a bigger monster this time. Our models are predicting a 9.5 or greater. Seen here at Grand Central Station, over half the platforms are flooded, and service has been suspended on all trains. The Hoover Dam disaster flash flood struck the communities of Kingman, Laughlin, Lake Havasu, and Yuma, Arizona. A wall of water reaching several hundred feet high tore through the area. What you're seeing is what's left of downtown. Standing in this remarkable spot, you can literally feel the forces of Earth at work. It is the meeting point for two major tectonic plates, which have been struggling to overpower each other for an eternity. California, home to millions of people and numerous cities, sits atop a fault line that spans over 800 miles from Cape Mendocino to the Mexican border. This place is the infamous San Andreas Fault Line. The San Andreas Fault has a long history of creating high-powered earthquakes which is why it is closely monitored by the U.S. government and all Californians alike. But now, a recent discovery in the San Andreas Fault area has revealed that a section of the fault has undergone something called seismic creep, which is when the plates move gradually, releasing stress without causing large quakes. But, as researchers looked back millions of years, they found evidence that this section of the fault may have experienced earthquakes of a magnitude of 7 or greater. That's stronger than the infamous Loma Prieta earthquake that shook the Bay Area in 1989. The devastating earthquake that struck Nepal on April 25, 2015, killed over 9,000 people. Over 600,000 homes were destroyed, leaving families homeless and vulnerable. The same happened to Turkey and Syria, which was so devastating to watch as how thousands of people died, left homeless and with nothing. Scientists have been keeping an eye on this area for decades, and it is considered one of the biggest threats faced by Southern California today. Although it's unclear when these massive quakes occurred, scientists believe they took place within the last three million years and that the San Andreas Fault might be due for a major earthquake soon. But the question is, when is the San Andreas Fault going to crack? When massive and powerful earthquakes are discussed, the San Andreas Fault automatically comes to mind especially for those living in California. It is a significant fracture of the Earth's crust in extreme western North America. This fault is divided into three segments. The northern segment from Hollister to the Mendocino Triple Junction, the central segment from Park Field to Hollister, and the southern segment from Park Field to the Salton Sea. The San Andreas Fault is greatly feared because of the tectonic movement detected around the foot as it's been associated with periodic earthquakes said to often develop near the surface along its path. When geoscientists drilled into the Earth's surface nearly two miles below as part of the Seyfad, they discovered something incredible a zone of the fault that has experienced not just one or two, but potentially more than 100 earthquakes. A perfect example Americans aren't going to forget so soon is the disastrous earthquake that happened in 1906. Another one occurred in 1989 but wasn't as severe as the first one. Five years later, a more powerful and destructive earthquake happened in the Los Angeles suburb of Northridge along one of San Andreas' larger secondary faults. The fact that these earthquakes happened and affected cities does not mean the San Andreas Fault went through the town. Since the last earthquake on the San Andreas, seismologists and geologists have been keeping a careful check on the fault lines since they consider it to be nothing less than a ticking time bomb. They are aware that an enormous catastrophe might strike at any moment and that California has to be ready. But what type of fault is the San Andreas Fault? The San Andreas Fault is not the only fault in California, but it is the 800-pound gorilla of faults here. A well-known geological feature in California, which stretches about 800 miles from the Gulf of California to Cape Mendocino. This fault serves as the boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North. San Andreas Fault would be classified as a strike-slip fault. This means the fault's two sides move horizontally past each other rather than vertically. It's this movement that creates the directivity pulse and allows energy to be transmitted down the fault. Many people believe that tectonic plates move at an incredible speed, but the reality is quite different. These plates move past each other at a sluggish pace of just a few inches per year equivalent to the rate at which your fingernails grow. Despite this slow rate, plate movement is far from steady. In some years, the plates can be locked in place, pushing against one another with no motion. However, strain gradually builds up over time until the rock breaks along the fault, 
and the plates suddenly slip a few feet. This sends out waves in all directions. While the San Andreas Fault runs underground, it is visible in some places. Being one of the longest and most significant faults in the world, it runs through some of the most populated regions of California, like Los Angeles and San Francisco. The fault's length makes it highly prone to seismic activity, as a longer fault has a more significant potential for disaster. The recent revelations by the director of the Southern California Earthquake Center, Thomas H. Jordan, have caused significant concerns for Californians as he announced that the San Andreas Fault appears to be in a critical state, indicating that a powerful earthquake could be on the horizon. While news of a looming earthquake may not surprise California residents, who have long feared the fault's potential for catastrophic events, the new warning was particularly alarming. Jordan warned that the fault's Southern California section could give way at any moment, saying that certain areas seems like they are ready to go. Indeed, this news would have turned the minds of every Californian and made them almost have their hearts in their mouths. However, the new warning that made them even more scared is that Southern California's section of the fault could give way at any point. This announcement was made during the National Earthquake Conference that took place in Long Beach, and according to him, the springs on the San Andreas system have been wound very tight, and the Southern San Andreas Fault, in particular, looks like it's locked, loaded, and ready to go. He also said, the fault has been quiet, too quiet. So, will it be the final reckoning for those who call California their home? To answer this, a team led by Thomas Jordan recently simulated a possible magnitude 7.8 quake on the San Andreas Fault. The results were nothing short of terrifying. The simulation begins at the Salton Sea and quickly spreads west towards the San Gabriel Mountains with seismic waves violently shaking the Los Angeles area. Another video shows ground shaking so intense it stretches from northern San Diego County all the way to Barstow. And this isn't the first time such a simulation has been conducted in 2010. The Southern California Earthquake Center used a supercomputer to predict what a magnitude 8 earthquake would look like. The simulation, modeled after the 1857 earthquake but even more substantial, starts in Monterey County and heads towards the Mexican border. In both simulations, the LA Basin and San Fernando Valley would bear the brunt of the destruction. Soft soils in the valley would trap the shaking, causing it to reverberate with incredible force. As a result, the vibration would be felt across a vast area, with the reach of the devastation expanding to unfathomable proportions. According to Thomas Jordan, the San Andreas Fault has a big directivity pulse that pushes energy down the fault, creating seismic waves that excite sedimentary basins like the San Fernando Valley and the Los Angeles Basin. This energy transfer leads to significant shaking in the region, persisting for long periods. Lucy Jones, a seismologist at the USGS, argues that the scenario may be overstated. Jones says that the scientists who did the analysis were shocked by how bad the fire damage was from the earthquake. If the Santa Ana winds are blowing at the time of the earthquake, things could get even worse. Even though Los Angeles has a water supply on its side of the San Andreas Fault, the drought has caused the reservoirs to run dry. Because of this, these seasonal winds blow dusty, dry air from the interior to the coast, which makes wildfires more likely. The potential damage from a future earthquake on the San Andreas Fault is why scientists and government officials are closely monitoring the situation. The United States Geological Survey has developed earthquake early warning systems, which can alert people of an earthquake before the shaking begins. These systems can provide seconds or even minutes of warning, giving people a chance to prepare and take cover. Now, a recent discovery in the area has shown that the San Andreas Fault is in a critical state and could be on the verge of cracking. The last time the South San Andreas region suffered such a disaster was in 1857, when a magnitude 7.9 earthquake ruptured a breathtaking 185 miles but there is something far more sinister than a high magnitude seismic event one of the reasons why the San Andreas Fault should be feared is not how much energy it has but what it can bring afterwards. Jordan also shared a dreadful report from the US Geological Survey that has sounded the alarm on the southern San Andreas Fault. According to the report, a catastrophic magnitude 7.8 earthquake could wreak havoc, causing 50,000 injuries, $200 billion in damages, and long-lasting disruptions. 
But that's not all. The report predicts an estimated 1,500 deaths and a crippled sewer system for six long months. The sheer power of the earthquake is astounding with shaking lasting almost two minutes. The Coachella Valley, Inland Empire, and Antelope Valley would bear the brunt of it. But even areas like the San Gabriel Valley in East Los Angeles, where sediments trap shaking waves, could suffer pockets of vigorous shaking. Dr. Lucy Jones, an earthquake expert, said that if Los Angeles were hit by a tremor like the one that hit southern Turkey and northern Syria, only 1% of buildings would collapse. However, many more buildings would become unlivable, and around 40% would be severely damaged and unusable. This means that even new condos in downtown LA could be affected. One study estimates that great earthquakes with magnitude 8 and higher happen to have an energy of 15 trillion kilograms of TNT. But they only happen once a year, and in 2004, one earthquake in Haiti was of magnitude 7.0. Earthquakes this size occur about 20 times each year worldwide. The Haiti earthquake released energy equivalent to 476 million kilograms of explosives about 100 times the amount of energy released by the atomic bomb which destroyed the city of Hiroshima during World War II. Earthquakes are deadly, but there is something far more sinister than a high-magnitude seismic event. One of the reasons why the San Andreas Fault should be feared is not how much energy it has but what it can bring afterwards. The study led by University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign civil and environmental engineering professor Ahmed Elbana and professor Aries Rozakis of the California Institute of Technology sheds light on the dangers of coastal areas surrounding the fault. The connection between strike slip faulting and tsunamis has been a topic of exploration. The simulations revealed that intersonic earthquakes, which are fault ruptures that happen so quickly that their movement outpaces the shaking waves they generate, can trigger massive tsunami waves. Major flooding is a possibility. Rivers and streams may become jammed up as a result of the rupture leading to flooding in the area. Furthermore, earthquakes can trigger landslides which can block rivers and lead to flooding strong tremors along the San Andreas Fault have been known to trigger extensive flooding in the areas nearby. The movie fanatics among you might already know about this. If you watch the movie, San Andreas, featuring the one and only Dwayne Johnson. Before making San Andreas, the people who made it talked to Thomas Jordan, who runs the Southern California Seismic Center. However, the level of destruction depicted in the film significantly exceeds the actual potential damage that could be caused by a catastrophic earthquake, known as the Big One. It is likely that the filmmakers did not adhere closely to Jordan's recommendations. According to Jordan, since the San Andreas Fault lies far inland and the land slips past on either side, an earthquake cannot cause the fault to split apart into a massive chasm as in the movie. Instead, big tsunamis like the one that struck Japan are caused by earthquakes that cause a significant displacement of the ocean floor. Seismologists strongly advise that we prioritize the construction of earthquake-resistant buildings and infrastructure. This can be achieved by incorporating flexible structures and shock-absorbing materials in the design process. Doing so can significantly enhance the likelihood of survival during seismic events. Moreover, it's crucial to establish reliable early warning systems that can provide ample time for coastal residents to evacuate in the event of a tsunami. These systems can be equipped with advanced sensors that detect even slight changes in sea level or seismic activity. The timely dissemination of alerts through text messages or other communication channels can mean the difference between life and death. Thus, implementing these measures should be a top priority for all communities in disaster-prone areas. Although San Andreas remains the most significant threat, only by continued monitoring and research can we hope to understand and reduce the seismic hazard over Southern California we can never prevent earthquakes, but by knowing what may happen we can prepare for them. Do you think the San Andreas Fault will cause more damage than the Southern California Earthquake Center predicted or will the San Andreas Fault remain silent forever? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. As always thanks for watching our video. See you in the next one.